It's easy to, you know, order and like, well, I'll think about that later. Yeah. And it, again, we do have copies of things like, you know, in the paper one day, you know, it's just about a little bit of fun. Vanessa was good. How was your meeting? It was good, really good. Yeah. You're running for Congress? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll tell you. She didn't tell me. <laughs> That's like the operative question here. Oh, Lord. It's like 80% of my district. How much does Richie have? Richie, maybe half. Not Richie's okay. house, I know that. He doesn't have more. He doesn't oh, have right, more than I do. And then I think Richie lives in Acacia Cortez. Right. right. Yeah, so I think it's maybe half. So Ronald, if Ronald. Oh, so he's got a move. He would have. Yeah. Not to run, I don't think. No. Oh, he would have. But if elected, then. Yeah, the majority of that council is. I mean, sorry, the majority of that congressional district is one council, seventeen. It's a nice district. It's wholly contained. Does um, Blake run? Blake, of course. Sorry. Why did I act like that? That, that is kind of. <laughs> <laughs> your, your candidate? <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy. I know. Uh, everyone loves him. Preacher man. That's my guy. <laughs> but he also, if he runs, he has to get up to the Senate. So he's yeah, he's so on the chair. Yeah. You can run for chair.
All right, good morning, good morning. I am Councilmember Donovan Richards from the 31st District in Queens and Chair of the Public Safety Committee. Uh, let me start by who we're joined with. We're joined by Councilmembers Chaim Deutsch, Paul Vallone, Keith Powers, Rory Lanceman, Andy Cohen, Vanessa Gibson, uh, Justin Brennan. And we are here today to vote on five resolutions calling on the state legislature and the United States Congress <laughs> to finally do what should have been done long ago. And it seems like they need the reminder. For a moment, it looked like these resolutions would have been meaningless by now because Albany seemed poised to finally end one of the most unnecessary and fruitless and costly endeavors in our state's history. Over the last several decades, marijuana criminalization has contributed to a deep sense of mistrust of the NYPD among the very communities that are in the direst need of police department, of direst need of a police department they can trust. It has put people in jail, cost them their jobs, their housing, even their children, and all that for no benefit to public health or public safety. Despite all of the reasons to legalize, it seems that there has been a delay in getting state legislation passed in connection with the budget, and we are urging our state legislators to take up the issue again in the spring. And we need them to do this now because we in this city are tired of paying the price for a legislative choice that we cannot change despite a willingness of the council and the mayor to do so. When the Criminal Justice Reform Act passed a few years ago, we were able to divert tens of thousands of arrests out of criminal court. We couldn't do that with marijuana because it, con it is controlled by state law. But we can't tolerate a situation in which we have no say over how the NYPD enforces the rules around marijuana any longer. Even now, while they are arresting far fewer people, the racial disparities in arrests and summonses are the same. We need to have control over our own police force, and even if marijuana is legalized, how they enforce the rules. We can't have a scenario where black people in minority communities get fined for the same behavior that goes unpunished in white communities. That's why I'm sponsoring proposed resolution 742-A, which would give localities like New York City the authority to determine whether and how we regulate public consumption of marijuana. We at the council have been willing to take action when the police department needs to change, and I can't say the same about Albany. So not only do we need them to legalize marijuana, we need our state legislature and governor to give us the power to change the rules on public consumption if the police department can't figure out how to enforce them fairly for everyone in the city. We are also voting on Resolution 75-A, sponsored by Councilmember Levin, which calls on the state to pass the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act which would not only legalize marijuana, but would encourage the kind of investment and business development opportunities in the communities most harmed by the war on drugs an essential component of starting a legalized marijuana industry here in New York. We are also voting on Resolution 296, sponsored by public advocate Jamani Williams, which will call on the New York City Housing Authority to add marijuana misdemeanors to the list of overlooked offenses so they can no longer be the sole basis for a person to lose their public housing. We are also voting on Resolution 743, sponsored by Councilmember Miller, which calls on the U.S. Congress to pass the Marijuana Justice Act of 2017, which would legalize marijuana at the federal level. Finally, we are voting on Resolution 745, sponsored by Councilmember Moya, which would call on the state to reclassify THC products from a controlled substance to the equivalent of flower marijuana. With that being said, uh, I will uh, go to any of my colleagues who are sponsors of these resolutions for comment. All right, okay, all righty, we'll, we will now open the vote. Matthew DiStefano, Committee Clerk, Committee on Public Safety. Roll call on the aforementioned resolutions. Council, uh, Chair Richards. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Cohen. Aye. Deutsch. 
uh, abstain on uh, 296 and no on 75, 742, 743, and 745. Lanceman. Aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Let's call it what it is. Marijuana has been legal for wealthy New Yorker. Marijuana has been legal for tourists. When was the last time that we heard someone from the 65 million tourists that came here last year being arrested? When have you heard that in a dog club that they have the VIP section in Midtown, shares in those areas? Someone being arrested because using weed. Someone being arrested because they've been using weed in the rooftop in New York City. So I believe that it is important to make marijuana legal for everyone. However, by voting on legalizing, on calling to pass law at the state level that will allow the city to legalize the recreation of marijuana, doesn't mean that we are calling, telling people go out and go and buy marijuana as we are not telling people to go out and go and buy beers or, or go and, and buy cigarettes. So I believe that it is important also that we understand that we are trying to do here is to bring fairness, to be sure that what has been a reality for wealthy New Yorkers and visitors is the same thing, the same standard for all New Yorkers. But at the same time, I also hope that as we're gonna be legalizing marijuana, that the revenue of marijuana will not be used for anything that is gonna be more than reinvesting that money in the poor neighborhood. That money should be used to fight addiction or opium or any drug addiction so that we can bring you know, investment to the underserved community. So with that, I will add by understanding that we are not encouraging people, especially in the underserved community. Uh, the message is not to say people go out and go in, and consume marijuana, but it's more bringing fairness to everyone. With that, I will add. Brandon. Aye. Valone. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, not there on all of these yet. I'm, I'm not there on a general overall approval on New York State and the federal. I think there's much work that needs to be done, especially on the impact with driving. But I am supporting those that specifically target areas that need to be looked at, such as NYCHA, such as reclassification, um, and such as giving New York City as it always should have the authority. So with that, I'm saying no on 75A and 743, yes on 296, yes on 742, and yes on 745. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Powers. All righty. Oh, you're going to read the book. Did you, did you get Lanceman? Okay, the, the following is a vote on today's public safety oh, items. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Yeah, just, just, did you get Lanceman? Lanceman. Aye. Okay. The vote on today's public safety items, resolution 75A, seven in the affirmative, two in the negative, no, zero abstentions, 296. Eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention, 742A. Eight in the affirmative, one negative, no abstention, 743. Seven in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstention, 745. Eight in the affirmative, one negative, no abstentions. Thank you. I'm going to read a statement by uh, my colleague who unfortunately had an emergency and couldn't make it, Councilmember Miller, uh, on uh, Resolution 743. Today this body will vote on one of two resolutions I am proudly sponsoring that call attention to the lasting damage inflicted on communities of color, primarily in the form of harsh prison sentences due to the racist war on drugs, and urges governments to undertake steps to correct the moral and social errors of criminalizing marijuana in particular. 
Resolution 743 calls on the federal government to enact the Marijuana Justice Act of 2017, sponsored by New York, Jer New Jersey, sorry, Senate Senator Cory Booker, which would end the federal prohibition of marijuana incentive similar changes in state law, automatically expunge federal marijuana use and possession crimes, and enable those incar incarcerated in federal prison to petition courts for resentencing. The NYPD rest recently testified that marijuana misdemeanor and violation arrests have fallen by 71 percent. Yet, despite the more lenient approach adopted by the department last fall, a recent analysis of the stats reflected that the racially biased enforcement of cannabis has persisted over that period while those for whites have actually fallen. The facts are clear. Whether arrest or summonses, the enforcement of marijuana prohibition perpetuates ra racial discrimination towards Americans and New Yorkers of color and must end. Our communities of color have especially suffered under these oppressive drug laws, but not all communities of color are alike. My diverse Southeast Queens district has one of the highest shares of owner-occupied homes in New York City and the largest conting contingent of civil service workers. Yet it led the city in marijuana summonses issued by the NYPD for over a decade. The legacy of over-policing these communities has served to, to, to deprive future generations of opportunities for higher education, employment, and home ownership. The process of making them whole again begins with automatically expunging, not sailing criminal records for petty marijuana offenses, and continues with the cannabis equity for our, our aggrieved communities of color. I thank the speaker, Chair Riches, and my colleagues with the BLAC, as well as the Progressive Caucus for supporting this resolution. I'd also like to thank Committee Counsel Daniel Addis and Analyst Keyshawn Denny for their work in drafting this legislation, as well as my Legislative Director Brandon Clark and Special Advisor Joseph Goldblum for their work towards its advancement. We at the Council are taking a clear stand on this, on this issue, and I implore both the Legislature and the Governor to heed our call as they continue to chart the course for the eventual legalization of marijuana in New York State. Councilmember Miller, on the record. All righty. And of course, he votes aye, although he's not here. Uh, with that being said, this hearing is now closed.
Test, test. This is a test. Today's date is March 26, 2019. This committee hearing on oversight and investigations being recorded by Sergeant Arms and Lopez.